Hello everyone, it's Bon and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will talk about the Ilford Sprite 35 II, which is another 35mm film camera that is reusable. So I will show you how to use it, how to load it with film and stuff, and I'll also show some sample photos from a photo walk that I did using it about a month ago. So if you're interested in that, then stick around. So yeah. The Ilford Sprite 35 II is another plastic film camera that's like a disposable, but reusable. Its lens has a standard field of view of 31mm f9 and a fixed shutter speed of 1 120th of a second, which is pretty much the same as all of these other reusable cameras. I bought mine online from B&H Photo and here's how it looked like when it arrived in the mail. It comes in many colors in combination with black and white, but I really like this all matte black version. It's made of a hard plastic that seems durable enough for what it is. The camera doesn't come with film, so you'll have to buy that separately, but it does come with a strap and instructions on how to use it. For the sample photos in this video, I used the roll of Lomography Color Negative 400, which is a relatively cheap but still pretty good all-around film stock. To load the camera with film, lift and pull the film rewind crank out, open the film door by pushing down on this lock notch, then place the film of your choice in the film chamber. You can use any color or black and white 35mm film with ISO 200 and above, and with any number of exposures up to 36. Notice the teeth on the film take up spool and this gear here. Attach the film leader to these using the sprocket holes. I usually turn the film advance wheel a bit to put some tension on the film to secure it in place before I close the film door. If loaded correctly, the film rewind crank should rotate as you turn the film advanced wheel. Once it clicks, the shutter is now loaded, allowing you to press the shutter button. Do this a couple of times until the film counter says 1, and you're ready to take your photos. To use the flash, you have to insert a AAA battery into the chamber in the bottom of the camera. The camera doesn't come with these either, so you'll have to purchase one separately. To turn on the flash, slide the flash toggle to on and wait for the light on the top of the camera to glow red. The flash should then be ready for your next photo. Slide the flash toggle to off again if you don't want to use it. Once you're finished shooting a roll of film, press the film rewind button on the bottom of the camera. Then, lift the film rewind crank lever out and start winding in the direction printed on it, or clockwise. Once there's no more tension from the film, you can open the film door and take the film out for processing. The Ilford Sprite 35 II is not that different from other reusable film cameras. As you can see here, it is very similar to the Kodak M35 and M38, Double Film Show, and Agvaphoto film cameras. Put side by side with the Double Film Show camera, you can see that the cameras have a lot in common. They have the same shape and size, same button placements, and identical backs. The difference is mostly aesthetic, with the show camera having a little leatherette on its side, while the sprite only has a textured plastic body. This camera actually looks strikingly similar to the Agfa Photo Film camera, 
The only difference is that the Agva photo camera has a nice leatherette wrapping overall. Okay, so let's see some sample photos, shall we? So I took this camera out for a photo walk back in July while I was at Calgary's Beltline area. This neighborhood is immediately south of downtown and has lots of cool places and shops including the camera store. Just after parking my car, I saw this guy walking his dog against this white building, which I thought would make for a nice photo. I wish I got closer though, so my car wouldn't have been on the frame. As I was walking, I saw this red staircase against the blue building with some nice shadows. As I got closer, I also noticed that there was a red door underneath it, which I thought would work well as a composition. And I do like how this photo turned out. Next, I had a bit of a Disney Pixar Luca moment as I saw this cool silver Vespa parked on the side of the road. What's that? Oh, it's just the greatest thing that humans ever made. The Vespa. Whoa. After that, I decided to leave the main road and go into this red alley looking for interesting things to photograph. And I saw this mural at a car park which I thought had a really nice color palette. I also noticed this interesting red building as I turned back. I like this photo's composition. It's mostly the color harmony, but I also like how the elements like the silver car and staircase are positioned. So always look back when you're on a photo walk. Who knows? you might see something interesting from a different angle. Here, I thought the wooden staircase, the door, and the brick structure would make for a good composition. I actually waited a bit here for the sun to come out of a cloud to get the lighting just right. And as I was waiting, this bar on wheels drove past me. This was during Calgary Stampede, which is this rodeo festival where people celebrate like cowboys. Visit Calgary in July if you're into that. And for this next one, I think I was able to take this photo at the right time, just when the woman was on full stride in front of the yellow door. Love it. Also, Calgary is always under construction. Here, I saw this guy wearing this orange construction clothes, which I thought would work well against the blues and disguise in the buildings. I really like how the colors were coming together, so I took another photo. I like how he was partially lit by the sun in this photo and the positions of the oranges against the blues. The scaffolding also worked really well as leading lines into the middle of the frame. Here, I wanted to take photos of people walking in front of this Canadian indigenous mural. The sun was hitting it in an angle which worked really well with the lines in the scene. But here you can see the pincushion distortion from the plastic lens. But that's okay because you can always remove that in post-processing. And of course, this Beltline photo walk won't be complete without a proper photo of the Calgary Tower. 
The power line is annoying me though, so I removed it in post. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. I then walked towards the Lewis Stationery Building, which was a warehouse that was built in 1910. It has since been converted to a series of lofts, which I think is pretty cool. For this, I love how this guy matched the colors of the photo so well, though I do wish that car wasn't there and that I was standing a bit further away so the top and bottom of the photo didn't look like they got cropped. Next, I walked towards the Memorial Park Library and got this photo. I used the tree branches to frame the library in the center, which turned out okay, I guess. Then I saw this person sitting on a bench under a tree. I thought it looked so peaceful, so I took a photo to try and capture the ambience. By the way, the viewfinder of this camera only shows 70% of the composition. As you can see from this shot, I sometimes get extra stuff in the frame that I don't like, so I have to crop it. And by this time, I was beginning to feel the heat, so I was just taking random photos to finish the few shots left in my roll. I like this photo of this church though. For this next photo, I waited for some people to walk in front of this quaint old house. I think the composition works well. <laughs> but can you take a selfie with this camera? <laughs> yeah, I guess. But my favorite photo from this roll is of this guy walking in front of this mural. He definitely noticed me aiming and waiting for the right time to take the photo, but I'm really happy with how this turned out. And that's it! Overall, I quite enjoyed using this camera. I think it's on the same level as the Kodak M35, M38, and double film show cameras. I think the Agva photo camera is slightly better just because of the viewfinder and distortions. However, this is definitely better than say the Yashica MF1 or the Lomography Simple Use film camera. Now, don't get me wrong, I still like my Lomography Simple Use film camera. However, the Ilford Sprite 35-2 is easier to use and produces images that are slightly better in quality. But again, I would like to emphasize that shooting with this camera is supposed to emulate shooting with disposable film cameras, so don't expect really sharp or crisp images. However, I hope that my sample photos illustrated that you can still get good photos from these types of cameras. You just need to approach it with the carefree and fun attitude that it's meant to be shoot with. And I'm sure you'll enjoy taking photos with it as well. Anyways, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you all in the next one. Cheers!